In this video I'm going to show you how to build a simple blog like this in under 20 minutes. You will have a simple nav bar at the top and a list of posts. If you go into them you can add comments and you also get a list of comments here. In the admin area you will be able to add posts to the database. So let's just go right into it. I will begin by setting up a virtual environment. I always recommend using this. This makes it easier to deploy and to maintain. So the first thing we are going to do is to create a new virtual environment. I do this by running virtual env and then the name code with stein which is the name of my blog 364 which is the python version I'm running and then I can just hit enter. Next step is to go into it and activate it. cd code it stein and then source bin activate. So packages I installed now will only be installed inside this environment. The first package and the only package I need is Django. pip install Django. This will install the newest stable version of Django and also some dependencies. When Django is installed we can create a new project by running Django-admin start project code with Stein. And then I can go into it again. Usually a Django project consists of many smaller apps. In our project we are going to have an app for the blog. This will cover the posts and the comments. This isn't a too complicated project, but splitting this into more apps is just unnecessary. To create the app I need to run one more command. python manage.py start app blog and just hit enter. Manage.py is a file we get when we create a new project. This is a script for running administrative tasks like creating new apps and similar. Ok, let's continue now by opening this project in Visual Studio Code. If you want to use a different editor, feel free to do so. When you have the project open in this editor, I just want to create a new folder called Templates inside Blog. Templates. And inside there I want to create one more folder called Blog. Django will automatically look for a folder called templates inside all of the apps. The reason I call this blog is that it makes it easier to separate it later. The last step now is to register the blog app with Django because Django doesn't know that it exists. So I need to go into settings.py and add it here in installed apps. Just write blog and save. Settings.py is globally settings for the whole project. Ok, let's continue by creating the database model for the post. A database model is a python class we use to describe to Django what the content is. If we take a blog post for example, we would need a title, slug, intro, body and maybe a timestamp. To create a database model for the post, open up blog slash models.py and then I create a new class by saying class post pass in models dot model and then I want the title field, title equals models dot char field, give it a max length of 255 and I want the slug, models dot slug field, this is a slugified version of the title, I want the intro to show on the front page, models dot text field and I want the body, models dot text field. Next I also want a timestamp, date added equals models.date time field and I give this a value of auto now add equals true. So every time we create a new post this will be automatically filled. And I want to add one more subclass here called meta, class meta ordering equals minus date added. By default it will order by the ID but I want to change it so we order by the date added and in descending order so we get the newest first. Next step now is to update the database. Do this by going back to the command line and running python manage.py make migrations. This will generate some files as you can see here and you can see here that we want to create a model called post. To run this script I just said python manage.py migrate. This will also generate some other initial tables from Django. And now we have the database. Perfect. To add posts to the blog I want to log into the Django admin interface. 
Django comes with this built-in, but we need a user to sign in. And to create this, we're in Python manage.py create super user, add a username, an email, and a password. And then I can run the server. Python manage.py run server. Django comes with the built-in development server. You cannot use this in production, but it's nice to have when you are just developing. So if I copy this now and try to open it in a browser, we'll see that the installation worked successfully and everything here is okay. If I go to slash admin, I can log in with the user I just created. Here you will see that we can see the groups and users but no post is here yet. This is because we need to register the model with the Django admin interface. I do this by going into admin.py in the blog app. And then I just say from dot models, models import post, admin.site register post and save. So if I now go back and refresh, you will see that we have the posts here. Okay, we can create one or two, so we have something in the database. Post one, create a slug. This is the intro to post one, the body, and the timestamp is added automatically. Add one more, post two, the intro for post two, the body for post two, and save. So now we have two posts in the database. Now we can start thinking about creating a front page to display a list of posts. Inside the blog folder here, we can create a new file called base.html. First I add the doc type, doc type HTML, add HTML tag and head, meta, char, set, utf8, title, code width, Stein, and then I want to add Bulma, which is a CSS framework, link, rel, style sheet, href, https, colon, slash, slash, cdn.jsdeliver.net, slash, npm, slash, bulma, at, bulma, at, 0.9.1, slash, css, slash, bulma, dot, min, dot, css. And that's everything we need for the Bulma to work. Now we create a body, and in the top of the body I want the menu. Nav, class, nav bar, div, sorry, div class, nav bar, brand, a href, this can load to, to the front page, class, nav bar item, strong code with stein, then we close the strong and we close the link. Perfect. Below the menu, I want the section, section, class, section. This will give some space above and below. Div class container. This will make it not go all the way out to the sides. In here, I add something called the Django code block, block content. And the block, this makes it possible to extend the base template, so we don't have to write this for all of the different templates. Most of the code here should look familiar if you know basic HTML. Okay, now I can create a new template for the front page. Front page.html. I want this to extend the base we just created, so I just say extends blog slash base.html. So this will find a folder named blog inside the templates folder and then a file called base.html. To put content inside here, I can just say block content and block, okay, like that, sorry. And here, as a h1, this is the front page. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link to my Patreon in the description below. But in order to show this template, we need something called a view. These are located inside views.py. You can create the first one by saying def front page, pass in the request, return, render request. So 
pass in the request again and then blog slash front page dot html so now we refer to this template then the last step to make this work is to import the view to a file called urls inside code with stein this is all the pages for the blog right now we just have the admin but here we want to add the front page as well so first i import it by saying from blog.views import front page and then i can add it to the top here part just add an empty part, pass in the view, and then we give it a name, front page, so we can refer to it other places. So if I save now, I can go to the front page, refresh, and now we see the menu we created, and this is the front page. Perfect. We can add a class to the navbar is info, so it will be blue, so it's easier to separate. Perfect. But a static front page like this isn't very exciting. We need to get the blog post from the database and to do this we need to change the views.py inside the blog app again. So I go back to views.py and first I need to import the post model from dot models import post and then I get the list here by saying posts equals post.objects.all. So now we get all the posts from the database. To use this in the front end, I need to pass them in here by saying posts and posts and save. Next, we need to change the front page template. So I can go back to front page again, just to remove this. And now I want to loop through all of the posts. So I create a new tag for post in posts and for and then div class post and block. So I have two classes, h2 class subtitle post.title. So this title refers to models.py and this. And then small, we want to show when the post was added, posted at post.date added. And at the bottom, we can show the intro, post.intro and save. If I refresh now, we'll get post 1, when it was posted, and then introduction, and the same up here. So now we can continue by creating the detail view of a blog post. So in here, create one more file, postdetail.html. I want this to extend the base as well. Extends blog base.html block content and block and in here I want to show the title h1 class title post dot title and then I want to add a small so we can see when it was posted at again post dot date added paragraph and strong to show the introduction at the top post dot intro and then we can show the body below here post.body in order to show this template to the user we need to create one more view so i can go into views.py again def post detail and pass in the request but here we also need a slug parameter this will reference this field so we can get the correct post from the database and to get it we just say post equal post dot objects dot get slug equals slug then we need to render this return render request blog post detail dot html which we just created i can just copy this replace with post so now it will pass in post to the front end next we need to import this view also to the urls you can just add it behind here post detail and then add it at the bottom of the URL patterns path slug slug the first slug here is that we want to type slug in the URL and this slug refers to this name then we pass in the post detail name and give it the name so we can reference it I will show you how we use this save next step is to add a read more button to the front page so below the intro I create a agrf 
use the function from Django called URL and post in the view post detail and behind here is the post.slug so this will automatically generate the path to this sorry I forgot I did something wrong here save it should look like this and behind here I can say read more and save so if I go here again refresh I'll have a read more button so this will take me to the detail page we now have a very simple blog but one thing is missing and that is comments to store the comments we will need a new database model so below the post model inside here we need to create one more class comment models dot model here we need a reference to the post so we know which post you commented on post equal models dot for key post related name equals comments so we can easily get this by just saying post dot comments on delete equals models dot cascade so when you delete the post you also delete the comments copy this change it to name because we want the name of the user the email email field this doesn't need a maximum length a body for the comment and the date added and then to change the order we can just copy this but here we want them in ascending order okay we now have added the new model but we need to update the database python manage.py make migrations and python manage.py migrate so as you can see here we created a new model in the database called comment great let's create a form for the comments i will begin by creating a new file called forms inside the blog forms.py from django import forms and then we need the comment model from dot models import comment class comment form here i need to pass in forms dot model form because i want to use something called a model form this makes it really easy to generate a form based on a database model i need to use a meta class to change the settings of this i need to set model to comment and which fields I want. I want the name, the email and the body. The date added will be automatically added and the post I need to fix manually later. So now I can save this file and go into views.py. I need to import this form I just created by saying from.forms import comment form. And then below here we will get the post I can check if the form was submitted by saying if request.method equals post then I say form equals comment form and pass in request.post which is all the data we get from the form and then I can check if the form is valid by saying if form.isValid and then I say comment equals form.save commit equals false because we can't save, save it to the database yet because the foreign key to the post but here i can say comment dot post equals post and then i can just save it by saying comment dot save next i want to redirect the user back to the detail page return redirect post detail and then i need to pass in the slug slug equals post dot slug which is the slug from this one and if it's not a post request then I can just say form equals comment form like that then I need to copy this pass it in here so we can use it in the front end okay the last thing I need to do here is to just copy redirect scroll to the top and paste it here behind the read render because redirect is also a shortcut from Django then I can run the server again so I have it and then the last step now is to go back to the post detail and below here I create the HR just to separate the posts from the comment create the title h2 class subtitle add comment form method post action is the same page we are on 
need to add the CSRF token. This is a built-in security from Django. And then I just want to show the form as a paragraph. Form.sp. So this will also take care of errors and similar. Below here I want to add a button by saying div class field, div class control, and the button class button is success. Submit. So now if I save this and go back here, refresh, we now have a very simple comment form. Stein, code with stein at gmail.com, first comment, submit. Okay, it seems like it was submitted, but we don't have a list of comments here yet. So we can add that now. I want to have this listed above this form, so I can just add one more line. And then here I say h2 class subtitle comments and then I loop through them by saying for comment in post.comments.all and I can say post.comment because we added this related name here and then article class media div class media content class content add a paragraph strong comment dot name behind here I want to say small comment dot date added add a break line here and comment dot body and if there are no comments I can just say empty div class Notification, no comments yet. And then I need to close the for loop by saying end for and save. So if I refresh now, okay, I did something wrong there. I forgot to curly braces. Save and refresh. So now we have a simple blog, which have comments and everything we need for this super simple blog. I hope you liked the video and if you did please click like below and share it with your friends.